doing a recorded stream to test out the Google YouTube video stream thing. My name is Tom. We're going to be making a new YouTube channel called Turbo Simons because that was available. So was that name on Instagram. I'm drinking delirium right now. It's day seven of this COVID crisis in Pennsylvania, and we're having a good time. We're going to be drawing tonight. Cheers to you. Thanks for tuning in. Delirium is delicious. We're going to be drawing some fan art of one of my favorite cosplayers. We're going to call her Katie, because I don't know what her cosplay handle is, but that's what her first name is. So we're going to draw a picture of her, and I'm going to take you through drawing a portrait and draw the figure. So here's her. What's up, Katie? Hanging out by the pool. Got a nice outfit on. We're gonna move you over to the upper left, and I'm gonna draw you here. So when we're drawing in Photoshop, we wanna have a background. I like this newspaper slate color background. It's low contrast, easier on the eyes. And then when I'm drawing, I can go lighter or darker. I can go dark lines, I can go light lines, and we have a big range to work with here. We don't have to think just about darkness and shadow. We can go lighter. So first thing, let's get a little line for the slope of her body in the pose. Deselect. Whoop, something like that. We're going to be using the first couple marks to stretch our arms out and warm up our eyeballs for seeing. Head shape, torso shape, mass conception of the cube or rectangle over the rib cage, then a trapezoid for the pelvis, cylinder for the thigh. The other thigh is occluded by the first leg. And then the pool coping is occluding all of that. Arm, elbow at the rib cage, forearm out, and then hand mostly covering the leg. Drawing from life is a great way to learn. If you don't have a model in front of you, photos are all right. Left arm extremely foreshortened here. If you can visualize the cut of the ribs and then that's swinging out in an arc, that's where you find the elbow. So the foreshortening of the ribs extends the foreshortening of the elbow there and then the arm bends back out because she identifies as a lady. <laughs> she is a lady. Those arms are going to bend a little bit different. People with wide hips typically have arms that bend out in a slightly different angle than people with narrower hips because as that arm is going to hang on the side it's going to adjust its position as you grow up. Hair, fancy, hair bit, boom boom. Alright, so we got the general General gist. Let's adjust the canvas size to fit more of the subject matter. So right now I'm using 2,000 pixels wide. I'm going to adjust this canvas by pixels to be a little bit taller. Let's say 2,500. And the width can be shorter. I'm going to bring it in. Let's leave it at 900. Make it even. Proceed. Let's even crop it even a little bit further. Didn't seem like it got a whole lot taller. Maybe I did the wrong function. Probably did image size instead of canvas size. I want canvas size to go up 2,500. What am I doing wrong? Width is on top, not height. That's what I'm doing wrong. Let's do height. Start over with this. Height 1,300 because 13 is a lucky number in my universe. No, too dark. Middle gray. A little, middle gray, a little bit of warmness. Sweet, that's what I'm talking about. So this line work generally got the gist of her pose there.
Is this scene interesting? Now we can change the scene up all we want because this is this is art. Do what we want. So I'm gonna think about what what kind of environment do I want her to be in. Uh, I don't know what character she is dressing up as right now, but I feel like that character would be happy in a in a giant flower petal. I think that would be great. I think she's gonna be sitting in a giant flower petal with um, her legs kind of hanging out the side. I think that'd be cool. Big old sunflowery looking thing. Uh, I know this is a mess right now, but we have to start with a mess and then clean up our mess as artists. Artists are really good at making a mess. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Whether it be Miley Cyrus making a mess of herself on stage, or whether it be Bob Ross um, just making a mess in his little palette thing as he's mixing his colors up. I mean, it's, it's organized because he's Bob Ross and it's great, but it's still kind of a mess. Like, it's still like this liquid goo that could get all over everything. All right, so this is just planning stages. So planning stage is its own layer. We're going to lower the opacity of that and then get into some of our little, like, line work. So let's go a little bit more specific. Let's go look at her face, for instance. We have a general massing of what her head's going to be. So let me move this drawing over here, and then um, go to draw new layer. Let's make this background even fainter. It's too bright. Okay, new layer for the line work. We're gonna start with the outside of the face, chin, cheek, ear is small and subtle. This is almost like a contour drawing, where we're just getting the outside, the general massing, neck, shoulder, clavicle. It would be handy if she had some kind of necklace, because that would contour, um, like a choker or something would contour what the shape of her neck really is. We're going to work without that. We might add in something later to show the viewer what the angle and shape is. But we'll worry about that later. We're doing a portrait for right now. Hair shape. Feel free when you're drawing to exaggerate. Cartoons are fun. Exaggeration's a good time. Getting precision just takes so much work, so much patience. Looks like she spent some time on her hair for this cosplay flower thing. Cool. We don't want to get too bogged down in the detail. We just want to get the general gist of what Katie's all about in this image. All right. I used to begin thinking about the face. I used the crosshair as a quick approximation of where the eyeballs and the nose intersect. And then you can build your features off of that. So that first line is just the front facing direction. And then the crosshair is the middle point where your glasses cross over your nose. Um, to construct the eyeball and the eyelid, I like to draw out very lightly the ball of the eye and then contour the eyelids over that ball. It's easier for me to visualize it. My brow, very key to the expression of the character. Nose. Eyelid. Katie is of a very interesting ethnical background, half Polish. <laughs> I misspoke. I used to call her Polish as a joke. Half Filipino, half Irish. That makes her Polish. That's the joke. I think that's funny. I hope you do too. She's actually half Filipino, half Irish. So she's got a little bit of Euro, a little bit of Asian uh, mixed together in a delicious dish. What would that meal be like? Got some, I mean, I know corned beef and cabbage is really an Americanized Irish dish. Bangers and mash mixed with uh, some, some Filipino food. Mmm. I think about that pork. 
I ask Katie that. Next time I hang out with her online, I'm like, what What do you guys decide on for Thanksgiving? What's your family eat? That's the brush, not the eraser. I want the eraser. Boom. Brush. Brush the nostril in there. Alright, this is good enough for now. You just want to rough everything in. I know that doesn't exactly look like hair. We'll come back to it. Just want to plan this thing out and make sure that the proportions are okay, first and foremost. Um, the famous painter Ang spent a lot of his time in the drawing phase of his artwork, making sure the proportions are the way he wanted them. It's a little hard in this photo to see where the black collar overlaps over the dark blue striping that's of the garment underneath. I can see that there's a sleeve sewed in there. Bicep, deltoid, elbow, forearm, radius, and ulna. And that hand is backwards. It looks so broken, but that's the way people work. Humans are flexy sometimes. If you're not like a 70-year-old dude, I mean, there's certainly 70-year-old yogi instructors that are flexy, but uh, not most 70-year-old Americans. Pretty rickety. COVID-19 is uh, in America right now, and my webcast is somewhat inspired by that because you can't go outside can't do much can't go interact with people so i'm interacting with you through streaming and that makes me feel good and hope you hopefully you guys are going to learn something from this too maybe about drawing maybe it inspires you to draw that'd be great i think everyone should draw drawing is a universal method of communication I like to joke and say that language is my second language. My first language is drawing, making images. A lot of people can see. I mean, communicating with the deaf is easy, but communicating with the blind, not so much when it comes to artwork. All right, arms, getting too, getting too nested in the weeds. Gotta zoom it out, soften the background just a little bit. I'm going to label these layers planning layer and then line layer. Line. All right, what's next, Katie? What do we got? We got the front facing of the pelvis, then there's the side facing, and the beginning of the leg. You have the pelvis here. And then the femur would come out, probably head of the femur is there, goes out to the knee. You have the quadriceps coming over the kneecap. So the arm is actually hiding the back end of the, of the pelvic area. You have to remember that if you were planning out the pelvis, it would probably be a little bit wider but the arm is cropping it. So I'm looking at the drawing, I'm leaning back to see is the proportion of the forearm, the correct proportion with the front of the pelvis and the side. little thick so I'm just going to use the eraser tool erase and redraw that line a little bit thinner all right then we have the hand I'm going to make a quick mark there just to get that started finish off the rest of the leg before we do anything else because I want the macro scale of this business to be pretty good before we get to anything else outside of the leg the lower leg 
we're going to draw this foot as if it's not in the water because our character here in our uh, imaginary drawing, real drawing imaginary fantasy place is going to be on top of a flower. So that's uh, going to be a little different than what is originally in the photo ref. Let's get that hand. Let's think about what what is this hand doing? Can we break this hand down into mass conceptions to understand what's going on? We have the wrist and we have a general cylinder tapered cylinder for the forearm. We have the massing of the palm of the hand with the line of the knuckles. The line of the knuckles being the, the ridge line that these four bumps make. Uh, looks like it's coming right towards the viewer. And then mass inception cylinder for the index finger and then mass inception for the first knuckle going down. The chunky spot in between the index finger and the thumb, and we come down. Middle finger comes straight out, ring finger resting up a little bit. It's better to draw your hands in, it, with some type of, type of dynamic uh, shape to them, either one finger out, two fingers out, some, some mix of flex and ability, because this is what makes us different from the animals. Besides our brains, besides everything else we do, besides these nations we build and couches and televisions and delicious delirium Noel beer, we have digits, very, very precise, controllable digits. So in the art world, expressing the movement of the fingers is akin to expressing our dominance as a species. Even though you love the whales, whales are amazing. Orcas? Jeez, I'm not going to mess with an orca. Mess me up. Eat me whole. I went on a whale watch like 10 weeks ago in San Diego. It was amazing. Saw some gray whales, 45 feet long. I can't, I can't understand it. Go to the San Diego Zoo. I mean, I don't know if it's open right now. It probably isn't. See an elephant? You ever see an elephant? They're awesome. Amazing creatures. How do they get to be so big? They're so smart. It's going to come out in our lifetime. Prediction. In the next 10 years, we will have human-dolphin communication. You can type a message, and somebody at SeaWorld is going to play your message to a dolphin, and the dolphin's going to be like, whistle back and squeak back to it and give you a response, and there is going to be dolphin YouTube celebrities. Mark my word. Mark my word. It might already exist. The Navy's working on it. DOD contracts. Dude, we're going to have some sick apex mammal hybrid friends out there in 10 years from now. If we all survive the COVID, we're going to have friends with mammals that you never seen before. And then we're going to really find out how pissed they are at us. Look at this. When I was talking, I didn't even realize I gave Katie two forearms. I gave her an extra joint. Right here, so I'm going to correct that right now, because that's scary. That's a, I drew thinking that, that was the elbow. That was just the end of her sleeve. Jesus. I heard was a good man. I heard he was a good man. I started reading the book of John recently, just because I heard it was so biblical. Hashtag Joe Rogan, Duncan Trussell, book of John, conversation. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Just some powerful language. Not sure uh, I buy it, but it's uh, fun. It's fun. It's certainly fun. Glad to give some people some guidance in life. You know, you do you. There's six billion of us and a whole lot of infinite nothing out in the galaxy. So uh, just have fun. Don't hurt anybody while you're here, all right? So that's what I say. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. All right, her chest coming down this way. So one of the benefits of drawing characters that have striping is that those lines of the striping or the seams inform the viewer of the contour of that shape. People who are interested in fashion know this. People who are interested in costume design know this. I want you who are artists out there who are aspiring or who are already developed artists we just haven't thought about this before to try to work this into uh, your costume designs, your modeling, whatever you want to do, is use the fashion, use the garment to inform the viewer of 
what the direction of your character's form is. Boom. Because this photo is telling me that. The photo is telling me what the contour of that arm is. Right? So we're using drawing from life or drawing from photographs as a way to educate ourselves on how to draw people out of our heads. Cool. All right. Let's see what else we do with his face because his face, frankly, doesn't work my friend Katie at all. We're going to adjust a couple things. Let's take a good hard look at her face. And just like my painting teacher at art school said, Bob Salazar said, take 30 seconds and look at your subject before you make a mark. Just wrap that in your noggin. What do I got wrong here? The eyeball doesn't quite work right. It's too left. The end of the nose lines up with the tip of the eyeball. So we're going to select that. Just move it over a little bit. Boom. Not too bad. That shape looks pretty good. Where else? Cheek is different. Chin's a little bit there. Lips, maybe, is the mouth a little bigger? We're looking at reference points. The, the index of her nose to the width of the width, width of the bottom lip. The lip starts receding back to the planes of the face before the edge of the nostril. I think I made the nose too big, as a matter of fact. Matter of fact. You know, let's not spend too much time looking at Katie's nose. She might get self-conscious, even for the sake of education. So we're going to thin up the top lip a little bit. getting better. It's getting better. Oh, you gotta, gotta get the dimples. Dimples are there. And then this is higher. And we have the teeth. All right, this is probably good enough for now because we're gonna come back to painting over later. When we get to the painting part of this uh, demonstration, we'll really nail down uh, the likeness at that point. But we're doing a full illustration here, so you have to remember that. Bam, pretty decent line work. We're going to flip this canvas just to see if it makes sense. Because we don't, when we show this drawing off to our clients, to our uh, fans, whatever you want to do, they're not going to see the reference that it came from. So they're not going to judge it in context of what was there originally. This piece needs to stand on its own. It needs to speak for itself. So we need to judge it as itself. One of the best ways to do that, flip the canvas around. Image, adjustments, something like that. Where is it? Flip canvas? I don't know. Image rotation, there it is. Flip the canvas horizontally. Boom. All right. So something's weird with the neck, shoulder, recessed thing. I think this arm needs to come out a little wider or the neck needs to come in. And then we need to have the trapezius defined and then the shoulder defined as separate. And then I think this, maybe, maybe the trapezius is smaller. The neck is there. Collarbone is there. The collarbone does that. The anatomy comes across. We have the deltoid inserting here, biceps here. We have the muscles of the forearm. Does this feel good or does that feel weird? It, it's, it still feels a little weird. So what I might do for the sake of the drawing is I'm going to turn some things around. I'm going to rotate this hand just a little bit. I'm going to extend this arm out. We're just going to experiment because we can always undo this. Let's see if this suddenly makes more sense as a drawing. If it doesn't, we just undo it. If it doesn't, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to where we were. We go back to that and accept it as being a little weird. What happens, Kate? I'm going to copy this. Copy this image over because we're going to mess with it a lot. What happens if I move the head? If the head moves over 
and up a little bit. That feels better. That feels better, doesn't it? Say in the comments, like and subscribe. Uh, does that feel better? Yeah, it does. It does. It's more balanced because that the, the balance of the line, sorry, the balance of the head, it has support to the left side of it and to the right of it. You want your art to have some structure, some believable structure. Even if it's unbelievable, if it's crazy structure, you want to have some kind of logic to it because the more internal logic you have within your artwork, the more believable it's going to be to everybody out there, everyone on the outside. They need something realistic to latch on to. That's why Star Wars worked out so well. The Star Wars had old shit in the background. Sorry, excuse me, French. Old stuff in the background. It had like props from 2001 a space odyssey and chevy pickups in the background and oh i don't know, by the way like the actual african desert things we can relate to are in the background so that when you put your spaceship in front of the african desert you're like well that could be like another version of earth well i believe that there is ground and gravity and air okay i'm in and then you can just insert spacecraft aliens and sentient robots star wars Gazillion dollars, box office. I'm drinking straight from the bottle. Let's go! Let's go! All right, we're drawing. All right, next step I do when I'm drawing characters. The fastest way to get to color is to solve the outline fill for me. So if I just selected exterior, Right now, I have a lot of these gap areas where there is a gap in the line work. So I can't just fill this right now. If I wanted to fill her character with a color, it's, it's not going to fully work. So what I'm going to do for the sake of this demo is do some line work to draw around the outside. Two trailer park girls go around on the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Thank you, Eminem, for making great music when I was a teenager. And just make sure it's solid. This way we get a good silhouette shape. Boom, boom, boom. I like that. That line's better. That line's better. Merge those line layers. Cool. Let's let's add a little bit of a silhouette dimple where the arm and the shirt meet. I think I want this hand to be a little bigger. It looks kind of small. Let's bring that up there. Cool. I'm, the hotkey I'm using is Control T. So L is lasso. Control T. I'll try to I'll try to remember to say those as we go because not all y'all know the hotkeys, and y'all should if you're doing a Photoshop painting. If you're here to watch, that's fine. Just come along for the ride. Comment, like, subscribe, hang out. Tell me how you feel about things. How do you feel about cosplay? I really want to know. Do you think it's cool? Do you think it's a little weird? Have a conversation about it. I'm entertained by it. I am glad people are dressing up and pretending it's Halloween all the time. Because this world's crazy. This world's surreal. We live in a fascinating time. Alright, what am I doing? Line work. Edge, edge work. So we're going to fill this figure in so that we can paint it up. Knee. Leg. Foot. Toes, ball of the foot, heel, ankle. Boom. All right. Hip, pelvic arch, back, trapezius. Anatomy for artists. Great class. All right. Now, what happens when we select the outside? We get some line work for that plant thing. I'm going to take the plant sketch and cut that and paste it into another layer. 
Gotta be down here somewhere. Cool. Plant. All right, we got our basic line for the figure. This is good enough to get started. We're gonna invert that selection. I'm using the magic wand tool to select the outside and then I'm inverting the selection and I'm going to select, modify, contract that selection by two pixels so that that selected area is within the line work. And then I'm gonna create a new layer and fill with the blue. Why blue? Because blue is the ambient color of the sky and it's the color that reflects on everything that we don't have a source light from. It is either easier to have a base ambient color and then add key light to it. Boom. So we got a fill. She's the blue lady right now. And we will develop some light from that. We're going to do some interesting stuff. The source art has a very flat, diffuse lighting to it. I would guess this is a cloudy day outside. Uh, nice photo, but a little boring when it comes to lighting. So I'm going to use some of the color sourcing in here, but do my own style of lighting for this illustration because, uh, I mean, it's fine. This is academically very challenging, but a little boring for a webcast. So what are we going to do? We're going to think about what would, make it, what would be an interesting light source for this pose. We have right now... Uh, a good fill. I'm going to lock the transparency on that using a technique I learned from Neville Page at the Game Developer Conference. Neville Page, great concept artist. We're going to talk about him real, 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 real quick. Neville Page did great character and animal design for Avatar. Oh my god, that's horrifying. Dude can paint. He works from ZBrush, does crazy alien stuff. When he wants to sell an idea, he recognized that you have to render it realistically because there's people in Hollywood who can't imagine very good. They're not clear thinkers. They're not clear mind's eye visual thinkers. Most artists tend to have a pretty robust mind's eye. It's a muscle that they've developed to visualize. A lot of people don't have that. And it took me a long time to realize that not a lot of people have that. So if you have a pretty clear ability to visualize something, then you're in the minority. So he realized if he wanted to get something funded and developed, he needed to do, he needed to do a very good job at drawing it. So he developed some uh, advanced techniques and quick methods of getting stuff to look realistic. Uh, Neville Page has designed all kinds of really good stuff. This is one of, so this is kind of one of his methods that I'm going to be talking about that I learned from him. Uh, just at a one-day conference, I would have loved to spend more time with him, but you know, you can't. Which is to use an airbrush-like brush. So I'm just going to make a mark so you can see what this brush does. It's solid in the middle and it fades out to the sides. We're going to brush in lights from a direction. So by picking that layer, locking the transparency down, I'm going to go to a screen mode, go to some kind of warm warm orange kind of layer. And I'm going to just experiment here. Let's copy that layer. Let's copy it into a group. Why not? Let's copy that. And then we're going to make some marks on this layer. And we're going to try lighting it from different angles and see if that's cool or not. So lighting it from the right. Is that interesting? Does that look cool? That looks pretty good to me. Interesting. And then we have a rim light on the other side, which would be a cool light. Is that cool? Let's try the other way. Let's try another one. Turn off the first one. Or actually, we can just select it and refill it if you want. Let's, uh, let's fill it again. So we've got the original still there. Second one. Let's try. Let's search. Let's try lighting it from the other side. So we're imagining the light source. It's some kind of setting sun looking thing. And then the rim light. We need some kind of shape over there.
Let me think about that. Is that more interesting? It's fun. It's going to be more challenging. It's more sinister. First one. Second one. Let's try another one. Why not? Let's try lighting it from right in front. So imagine it's coming. The, the light is coming from us, or from just to our right, the viewer's position to the right. Then we have a rim above sky blue, something like that. Not too bad. I think I like the first one best. We're going to stick with that one because it's very clear left, right colors. It's going to be most interesting to work from. So we'll leave this uh, like that. We'll delete everything else for the sake of the demo. And then we're going to get to the background because that's going to be the next most important thing. Actually, let me throw some quick color in to uh, KDO here. I'm going to go overlay mode and then paint in just a real loose skin tone about 30 percent over this lighting information just a little bit of skin tone there it's a little dark let's lighten it up just a little bit 30 percent skin tone there legs your skin tone boom we're going to go dark navy for the pants. Let's change the brush up. Dark navy for the pants. And a lighter blue for the stripes in the shirt. Actually, it's got to be white first. Let's start with the warm cream uh, light for the shirt. It's too bright. It's too bright. More saturated blue for the stripes. This will be a challenge later to paint, but we will worry about that when we get to it. Cross that bridge when we get to it, as they say, don't they? Something like that. Shaded just a hair. Boom, boom, cool. This is fun. Having a good time. Skin tones just a little bit more in terms of the highlights. Something like that. Too strong. Too strong. We're going to sample the colors that we already have. Just kind of paint that shadow and that highlight in just for now because we're just blocking it all out. We're blocking the whole thing out. Wait. Just for now. Just to get us started, just to get us, just to get our juices going on this piece here. Cool. That's enough to get started. You don't need much. You don't need, you don't need that much more um, than that just to begin. All right, I'm gonna go black with the hair. I'm using the airbrush, I could use my more horse hair style brush here just to fill in lightly glazing in there to keep a little bit of that lighting information and then it's a gray for the flower
something like that. And then the sash scarf thing is a dark color. And it's got his wipe stripe. Cool. Again, we're going to revisit all this. Just wanted to get it started so we can go to the background. Save the file. For the love of God, save. All right, call us peace. Kitty fan art. And they build computers pretty good these days, but you never know when lightning will strike and knock out all your hard work. Let's try to save pretty often. Control S. Save. Hot key. Boom. Done. Control S. Save. All right. We're going to make another layer underneath of this. But we're going to do our background line work. Kind of planned out this giant sunflower looking thing. And we're just going to just draw that again. Something like that. It's got foreground petals and background petals. Foreground, background, background, foreground. That's fun. Background there. Back foreground. Foreground petal. Um, thinking about maybe drawing an insect hanging out next to her, but that'd be weird. Maybe she gets wings. How fun would that be? Maybe she's like the bug hanging out in the insect. You know, I don't know what character she is, but uh, I'm thinking she's gonna get fairy wings for um, this uh, demo. She's, she's, she's just that's what's gonna happen. She's gonna get some uh, get some fairy wings there. Cause why not? I think she would dig that. And then we're gonna fill. Let's go. Let's call this fairy wings. And then behind that is gonna be um, fairy wing fill. And that's going to be some kind of color. I'm just putting down whatever we have right now just to mass it out. And then behind that, BG line, BG fill. BG in his background. Uh, so what are we going to do? Let's do like some kind of sage, yellow, green, brown thing. Uh, just right across the background. Too saturated. Let's knock it down just a little bit. Cool. And then sunflower. Let's get some. Probably should get some reference. We want a sunflower or a daisy. I don't know. We gotta pull up. Pull up some YouTube. What does a sunflower look like? Sunflower. So it's dark in the middle with the yellow petals. It's pretty cool. What's the one? I'm thinking of the one with the with the yellow middle though. I think that might be a daisy. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's. I know I'm making that mouth sound effect a lot. I'm thinking more daisy is what I like. Oh, it's a pink daisy. Yeah, that's what I think she'd be all about. This. That's what she'd be all about. Just obnoxiously pink, and uh, against that green background. Okay, so. This kind of image is what I'm thinking about. I'm gonna put it on my other monitor, so I got other uh, room. So we're gonna we're gonna go pink daisy here. God, this is uh, gonna be intense. It's gonna be intense. We start dark, so that way we can go lighter from it. It's hard to go bright and come back down to dark, but it's very easy to start with dark and go lighter because the color saturation is higher at the bottom. That saturation, when you crank it up, maintains its color and goes to brightness. If you go bright, you lose a lot of that color saturation. So when you come back down again, it ends up being muddy. I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are having a good time out there on the internets. Internet land. So the middle is kind of yellow. It's actually a little green. We're just going to fudge with it just a little bit. Um, um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's great. This is, this is just fun. 
It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time here. Uh, it's important not to work too much detail on anything right now because we have to get the whole image working together because no one's going to care about your details if your whole image is bad. You want your whole image to be pretty good first to draw people in to want to see your details. It's hard. We're all artists. We're detail fixated people. But you got to remember what the rest of the world's like. You got to be conscientious and agreeable to what the rest of people want to see. Do some artwork for yourself, but every once in a while, do artwork for someone else. This is so outside of my comfort zone as art, I can't even express to you. I'm used to drawing commandos, machine guns, tanks, uh, exterior environment landscapes that are exploding right now. And this is the opposite in almost every single way. So I encourage you to get out of your, your typical zone. I draw all that commando type stuff because I came from a military type family and uh, my dad was in the Navy, cousins in the Army, brother uh, in the Army and that's something I wanted to do when I was a little kid. I thought it would be really heroic and cool to be a soldier. Uh, but then I got asthma and no discipline. So I went to art school and art school was awesome. I had a great time in art school and I was lucky enough to get a job. Uh, when I was a student, I got an internship at Forexis Games. In Hunt Valley, Maryland, where I worked on a game called Civilization. Sid Meier Civilization. Worked for Sid for several years, and he's a great guy, sweetheart, loves games, designs good games, entertains people. So he did, I mean, Sid Meier's start was in military simulation games too. Um, M1 Tank Platoon, Gunship, F-117 Strike Fighter. A lot of these military simulator games were his first projects before coming up with the famous Sid Meier's Pirates, Sid Meier's Civilization, uh, Sid Meier's Starships, all these different games that he's worked on. Uh, uh, Sid Meier's Gettysburg were part of that military history growing up background. Like I think he was inspired by the same kind of things I was inspired by, but you know, different generations, of course. I'm not trying to uh, simplify the complexities of Sid's brain. But I'm just trying to say, like, the same things inspire all of us, no matter how brilliant you are or how simple you are. You know, a flower is still pretty to just about everybody. Delirium. This is good. We're going to take a break to acknowledge our sponsors today. Uh, I don't have any sponsors, but this is delicious. Earlier today, it was coffee by Black Rifle Coffee Company. And right now, it's some fine Belgian crisp ale that has been sitting out too long and needed to be drunk. Since 1654, I love the term, I think this was in Dan Brown's book, like Angels and Demons, that the church is an organization that thinks in centuries. That's really weird. To, to be an organization that thinks about plans long beyond the human lifespan. Especially now, dude. You know, what you doing? Hey, Italy, where's your God now? Right? Jesus. Not to be joked about, but why not? Why not? Damn, I feel bad for people in Italy, dude. It looks ludicrous uh, over there right now. I feel, uh, actually feel really bad. It looks like that's what made it feel real to me, how serious uh, COVID is because of what it looks like in those ICUs and those impromptu ICUs in Italy right now with people with the bags over their heads. Shoot, I mean, Katsukan was just like a month ago, like four weeks ago, the world was completely different. It's weird. Like, life's never going to be the same. That's what was Everyone's going to become a prepper now. Everyone on the planet is going to become a apocalypse a prepper because now we've seen it. Everyone's now seen rampant viral outbreak. Crazy time. I went back to her hand because it was bugging me a little bit. Hey girl, what flower you want to sit on later? You gonna be here for a while? No, Jesus, Jesus, place you come often? 
It must be weird being a bug, getting hit on by other bugs all the time. I think other bugs are into other bugs. And they just compulsively, I don't know. Get off this subject, because it is a family-friendly channel. Alright, what am I drawing right now? What am I thinking about? Self-critique time. What do I think about this image? I think it's probably unbalanced. How do we tell? We flip it. Let's flip it again. Image. Image rotation. Flip. A lot of artists coming out of art school are terrified of the flip. And I've talked at Mike a couple times, my alma mater, Maryland Institute College of Art, about flipping the canvas. And they're so scared to do it because they're worried it's going to be bad. In all things, learn how to fail fast. Get to the mistakes quickly so you can then fix it later in life. I think that's why college is so effective because college is an environment where you can fail early and often. And people will tell you. Because they don't want to, they don't care about hurting your feelings. Yet. You're young and you're flexible. You're bendy. Your your bones aren't fully thick, fused yet. You can take a punch when you're 18, 19, 20, 21. When you're 36, like me, a really hard punch might like set me back for four years. So it's good to fail a lot when you're young, and uh, learn how to recover from that. Like how, learn how to pick yourself back up. And artistically, learn how to correct the drawing early if it's not working. So that's why we rush to this point right now. We have enough to tell us, does this work on a conceptual level, on a uh, arrangement level, Did the colors start to make sense. The first tool we're going to use in that is the rule of thirds. Create a new layer, we'll create some yellow lines just to demonstrate. The rule of thirds dictates that where the third lines intersect are these power points. This is a lesson I learned in my video production class back in high school. If you can compose your shot to have things happening on those power points, it's going to be a more compelling visual image. So what we're going to do is rearrange a couple things. That knee almost lines up, lines up with the bottom left power point, and the head almost lines up with the upper right power point. So what I'm thinking is I can shift Katie on the plant so it moves a little bit over. So I'm going to grab her and her fairy wings. Here's the line for her. Okay, that's the line. That's the power points. Uh, cancel. Line. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm holding control and selecting the layers that I know she's involved with. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys to shimmy her over just a little bit to kind of fit in those PowerPoints and nestled in between those. Let's turn the PowerPoints off and that starts to feel a little bit better. So let's make those PowerPoints lighter. What do you think? What do you think? Does that work better? Now the, the image is a little unbalanced. It's heavier on the right than the left because there's darker colors, there's bigger shapes on the right side of the canvas. So we need to counter that. We need to balance our image out. We're probably adding some darks on the left side. So that's what I want to do right now. I'm going to turn off the PowerPoint, go to the background image, and I'm going to use my airbrush and then take some blues. Maybe there's some water and I'm going to darken the left side of this image uh, extensively. What would have been better actually is I'm going to select that green because it was a solid fill. select the green area and then I can just airbrush in with multiply boom okay now we're getting behind the plane boom. all right so suddenly that starts to balance compositionally out we have the weight on the right weight on the left scale in the middle good enough close enough cool uh, let's actually paint some water you know I said the word water I had blue I wasn't really thinking consciously about it uh, before, but subconsciously, I think I wanted a lily pad back here. So, um, I don't know what universe this is in. I've been playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, and they got lily pads with some Korok dudes in there. So maybe I'll just have a little Korok dude hanging out with his little, little fairy wings in the back here. And he's got his little green uh, uh, mask thing. I don't know. Those guys are great. They make life worth living. It's funny, when I go out into the woods now and go for a hike, I'm looking for little Korok dudes. I'm like, that's, that's, in, that's in a Zelda game, Tom. Why are you looking 
looking for Koroks in the real world. They don't really exist, man. But that's okay. Whatever you got to do to stay sane in uh, this world, that's what I'm saying. Whatever you got to do. Dude, now that I'm doing this for reals, like streaming art, I get it. Bob Ross, I get it, dude. I know why you're telling weird stories all the time. Cause that's just where your brain goes when you're in a studio talking by yourself in a quiet room. Like I'm thinking about what are my neighbors hearing right now? Like I got, I got a church lady over there, and I got a couple over here with a couple kids. Like this dude, our neighbor Tom was this cool, chill guy forever, and now he's talking to himself all the time. Who's he talking to? Look, I'm talking to the universe. I got YouTube out there. YouTube's uh, huge. I don't know. Untold generations in the future. How cool is that? You can now leave your mark on on the cumulative history of humanity. You can make a video right now. Dude, humanity might not be here in five minutes. We might all get the COVID. The Boogaloo flu. I heard that from Chuck Pressburg, one of the YouTube people I follow. Boogaloo flu. Uh, I like that. Korok dudes have little sticks in their hands. Like, hey, I got a stick. And it's got some berries on it. Like, let's celebrate life and whatever. All right, Korok dudes in the background. This is the sloppiest drawing I've ever done, but it's already conveying an idea, and that's pretty cool. So what are we going to do from here? We have our we have our plan laid out, and now we're going to tighten it up. I'm looking at the feed right now, and I'm seeing that the whole image is kind of dark. It's on the lower end of the whole spectrum. I'm going to copy everything to a new layer and flatten it. And this is going to be my working functional layer. I'm going to make sure there's a background. I'm just going to fill that in. And then all this other stuff I can just hide. So I know this is what you see is what you get. I'm just working in this one layer now. It's easier conceptually for me just to paint directly on top of this uh, area, this canvas. is what I'm just going to start painting directly on. First and foremost, let's fix the face a little bit. Let's get that likeness back to something that we can recognize as my friend Katie. So uh, we don't want the Facebook image. We want the reference image to load up. What up, girl? Hi. Let's get you looking like yourself. And then we're going to fix your background. Katie would be like, hey, oh my god, it doesn't look like me. I'm like, oh no, I'm working on it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. What you got going on? So I'm probably going to end up drawing it just like the, like the portrait picture is here. And then I'm going to reshade it the way the illustration is shaded. So I'm mostly working in tones. Do some other like highlights coming from the left. I know that. So we're gonna be going a little bit more uh, strong colored from the left side. Just making sure the details are heard. Is that is that eye shape even close to right? I mean, it looks like she's got some dark, maybe blue eye shadow. Can't really tell. I know in reality her eyes are very orange like hazel orange, which is quite unique for someone of the Asian persuasion. So that's where the Irish comes from. So she doesn't even need to wear those contacts when she's at the cons. She just shows up. All natural, boys! That's what she does. She doesn't do that. She actually just says, hey, I'm uh, playing Pokemon. I'm going play some Pokemon. That's more like what she says. Boom!
what can we talk about? I got some songs playing in my head right now. I got some ZZ Top in my head. I also got some Modest Yahoo in my head. Earlier tonight, listening to Go Go Gadget do some cover songs. With my friend Joanne, that was fun. Soundtrack inside your head. If it all is quiet, what is the song you hear right now? Is it Billie Eilish? Is it that new song that she's got, that new hotness? I'm a bad guy song. Or is it the Barry the Friend song? Or is it the new uh, James Bond kind of song? No Time to Die? Or is it something totally different? Like, is it uh, Cakes the Distance? Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Engines pumping and thumping in time. The green light flashes, the flags go up. Churning and burning, they yearn for the cup. They daftly maneuver and muscle for rank. Fuel burning fast on an empty tank. Something like that. Reckless and wild. Spinning through the turns. Prowesses. Violent, secretly stern. As I speed through the finish, the flags go down. The fans get up and they get out of town. The arena is empty except for one man who's driving and striving as fast as he can. The sun is going down, but the moon has come up. And long ago, somebody left with the cup. But he's striving and driving and hugging the turns and thinking of someone for whom he still yearns. He's going the distance. That's cake. Go listen to it if you haven't already heard it. He's going for speed. She's all alone, all alone. In the time of need. He's racing and facing the bottom of the course. He's fighting and riding and riding on his horse. He's going the distance. I heard a really good cover of that on 98 Rock recently that was I'm Keeping My Distance for the COVID case. Brilliant. What up, girl? Stop smiling at me. Shucks. All right, we got to stop looking at your face because if we get too detailed, it's um, not going to make for a good drawing. Um, let's face it. I, I don't think it looks any more like her, but that was fun. Let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going with this illustration. Zoom back out. We'll, we'll return to the face. If you get frustrated on something, you know, leave it for later. Let's do something else. Let's do something else. We're going to paint over that. It's fine to sample from a picture every once in a while to get those colors right. Like I'm picking this color and I'm realizing that's pretty That's pretty cool. I thought it would be warmer. Why? Because I thought it would be warmer. Not because I was actually looking at it and saying to myself, hmm, that's not yellow or orange. It's a little bit gray, cool, dead slate. I don't know. You gotta have these conversations with yourself. At least in your mind. You gotta paint out this line that's going down her thigh. That would define the exterior of the primary muscle in your quadricep, but that isn't really that visible in this photo right now. Sorry, you just ain't that jacked. Some people, a little too jacked. So I'm noticing right now this, this drawing on the hand is not quite right. I, it's uh, not as bendy as, uh, as I indicated here. And the hand is further back. So we're going to use this time to adjust that a little bit. We're going to bring the whole hand back a little bit. Control, excuse me, Alt and Move Tool, which is V. So V to get to the move tool, and then Alt to copy what has been selected. And then twist it just a little bit. Something like that looks that looks that looks a little better to me. That looks a little better to me. We have the five here. Mm. Okay. That's better. No trophy, no flowers, no flashbulbs, no line. He's haunted by something he cannot define. Bowel shaking earthquakes of doubt and remorse. Impale him, assail him with monster truck force. In his mind, he's still racing, still chasing the gray. He's hoping in time that his memories will fade. He's driving and striving and plotting the course. He's fighting and riding and riding on his horse. The sun has gone down, but the moon has gone up. That song long ago, somebody left with the cup. 
he's driving and driving and how he turns and thinking of someone for him he still yearns I'm keeping my distance folds are fun uh, getting into uh, folds compression I mean the, the old masters like Raphael man he just dug painting some lines in some folds they were just all about those like heavy tapestry like garments that cover the body cover the figure we need some shadow on here right now I'm gonna pick that color come down and more saturated and maybe a little cooler cooler being more towards blue warmer being more towards red and then let's go a little bit more yellow on this side let's have some stuff growing like it's like a bed of grass or some business I don't know. We're just having fun. We're just having some fun with it. Let's go airbrush. Soften up this leg. So I like drawing over my line work because there's a bit of chaos in that line work and that chaos can translate into detail, like accidental detail. And that makes things feel more realistic. Let's pin this collar a little bit. So since we have a strong sun coming from the left in the subject matter, I'm going to go screen mode, warm, sunny color, and then hit the sunny parts of her face with that warm. Color. Let's see bright surfaces that are on her person that are facing the left where the sun's coming from over here the Korok dude Dumb. Um, I'm just gonna go over just the areas of the subject that should be brighter So we've lost some of the detail in her nose because of that last mark. So we're going to come back to normal brush and uh, touch that up a bit. More pink on the nose. We can go a little bit more red, lightly glaze in just a little bit more saturated red on the cheeks and around the eyes. This is an artist trick. It's also a makeup trick for you uh, people out there who are into uh, costume makeup to accentuate femininity um, or, uh, or vulnerability by having more of that blood lush uh, at the surface. I'm not saying vulnerability is a bad thing. It could be a lure, it could be a trap. Like I think Master Commander, Far Side of the World. Lucky Jack, Captain Aubrey, made his warship look like a vulnerable whaling ship to draw the French frigate in close where he could attack and capture it. Couldn't beat him at long range. He had to beat him up close. Close quarters combat. Solid snake style. So maybe when that oh-so-good-looking uh, character in your life looks vulnerable to you, maybe they're just pulling you into a trap. Maybe they're just trying to lure you in to take advantage of you, take you for all your worth. you got to be careful out there, everybody.
She's got them lashes on thick. A little bit darker underneath the chin jawline just to accentuate that jaw. You know, it's a shame in this image I really can't see the like the tr the nature of the hair here. So I'm just guessing at the direction that this is going in. I'm trying to follow the shape and contour of the surface because that those contour lines are called the haptic. It's the surface of the subject and when you make a, a line that follows the contour it's educating the viewer on what that surface actually feels like. Okay, my estimate of the collarbone is a little off, so let's fix that. Let's go to that light color um, for the sunshine on the clavicle. Airbrush. We're getting a little bit of the shoulder here. So there's a little pocket of the shoulder right between where the pect intersects the deltoid. So the deltoid comes over from the top, like the last third of your clavicle out. So if, if we if we did a little anatomy deep dive on what's going on with her clavicle right here, her collarbone, it starts here, comes up, comes out towards the shoulder. So this part is gonna be deltoid um, strands coming off of that. And then pec is gonna be coming this direction off the top of the clavicle and then across the sternum, across the chest. So you can have just a little bit of a, a shadowy hit there and then fill everything else um, back in the gradient. The brightest area is gonna be in the middle. And then probably just off the collarbone just a little bit. See a little hint of the sternomastoids, the two big muscles that come up from the top of your collarbones up to the back, sorry, around your jawline up to your ears. Sternomastoid. Reminds me of the name of, uh, I don't know why. why, why is Thor's twins coming to mind? I'm thinking of Hunter October, something under, some mastiff underwater structure that they're navigating the submarine through in that movie. Coming to Thor's Mastiff and then Thor's Twins. Something like that. Something. Sternomastoid. I think that's what it's called. I'm like 70% sure that's what it's called. Looking at the reference of this flower on my left screen, I'm seeing this is just way more pink. I can go so much pinker here, uh, and that's fun. But if it was pink everywhere, it would just kind of be overwhelming. So we're just going to hit the hottest pink, and then go a little darker and redder as it comes back towards the root. That way, we're just not overwhelmed. We're not overwhelming our viewer with pink and driving them away from what we really care about. Pink, it's my new obsession. Pink, it's not even a question. The great Aerosmith. 
pink like the sheets that we lay on. Cause pink, it's my favorite crayon. Pink, it was not at first sight. Something like that. Cause pink, it's my heart as a pie. Everything will always be alright already. Something like that. That was terrible. Terrible rendition of a great Aerosmith song. Sorry, boys. We're all weak. How are we doing? Court has been going on for an hour and 16 minutes. I think that's a fair amount of time for this webcast. We can go and do more of this another time. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed this and had a good time seeing how I approach drawing art. I will keep refining this as I see the inspiration for it and keep trying to make Katie's face look like Katie's face because uh, I'm missing something here. I'm going to have to look at it and go back through my notes. But we have an interesting image and sometimes maybe that's good enough. Maybe sometimes you try to draw your friends and it looks like somebody else, but it's still a good drawing. And no one else would know if they don't know what your friends look like. So draw your friends and put them in your artwork. Thanks so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or uh, purgatory, whatever you find yourself in. Take care.